historic beaches of Normandy, all is quiet and peaceful on D plus 365. Memorial services are held by Canadian units to keep ever fresh the memory of the beginning of the Grand Crusade. One year ago, the 3rd Canadian Division stormed the self-same beach near Belmiel-sur-Mer. One third of the initial invading force, they with their British and American comrades, bought with their blood the precious beachheads from which the forces of retribution pressed on to the conquest. On invasion day, the mighty host which carried the challenge to the enemy clusters around the war-scarred church which now looks down on the symbols of thanksgiving for full freedom from the ravages of the oppressor. In all liberated countries, freed men gather to honor their deliverance. Vocally and by floral tribute, they extol the deeds of their gallant allies who gave them peace. veterans make a pilgrimage to the resting place of their Canadian liberators in Beni sur mer In the military cemetery, proud pennons wave over plots of foreign soil which will remain forever Canada. On the first anniversary of the supreme sacrifice, free men pause to renew the pledge that, under God, the world will march forward in freedom and peace to a bright tomorrow. Sure signs of peace are observed at Canadian military headquarters in London's Trafalgar Square. The blast walls, which have protected headquarters from the force of air bombs and V bombs since the early days of the Blitz, are demolished by the Royal Canadian Engineers. With Germany defeated and the menace of death from the skies removed, all London sets about tearing down air raid shelters. Bastions of defense are reduced to piles of brick which may be used in reconstructing a blitzed city. During the Battle of Britain, the enemy scored a direct hit on the Hampton building at the rear of Canada House. This was the nearest miss recorded at CMHQ. With the new beauty treatment, the building, familiar to thousands of Canadians, assumes its peacetime appearance. Open for business is the Well Baby Clinic of the Royal Canadian Navy at Halifax. Typical of the eight other establishments at other naval stations across Canada is the Staticona Clinic at the Eastern Port. With mother building corvettes, it falls to the lot of proud papa, beaver and all, to bring the salty offspring in for his regular once over. What, an extra pound? Junior is getting to be as fat as a rear admiral. The Well Baby Clinic, which cares for healthy babies only, operates for the children of all naval personnel. It gives periodic physical examinations, vaccination against children's diseases, adjustment of feeding problems, and a regular check of weight and well-being. The Bouchard twins are living examples of its efficiency. The Day Nursery School looks after Jack Tar Jr., while mother gets on with the war effort and father sails the seven seas. So young Canada is kept fit and healthy for his future job of building a great free dominion. As Germany comes under allied control, one of the biggest problems is handling the millions of slave workers and displaced persons. At the concentration area near the Kusten Canal, the military government section of 4th Canadian Division supervises the de-lousing routine of the field hygiene section. Ukrainian nationals embark on transport which will take them to their particular camp in which has been selected by a military government recce party. At Aurich, Germany, the 3rd Canadian Division begins the great task of sorting out persons according to nationality and locality. The RCASC takes them out to vacant German work camps, which are to be their temporary homes. A Russian officer attached to AMG explains to a group of his countrymen the rules of the camp. No matter what happens, the family wash must be done. 
community life goes on as usual. But now the German women do all the hard work while the ex-slaves take life easy and enjoy a little summer picnic under the trees. Although a German nurse and doctor are allotted to each camp, Canadian MOs see that medical care is provided to keep the displaced persons healthy and fit. Years of hardship have not killed the spirit of the unfortunate people. They can still sing and dance when the day's work is done. Their simple hearts respond to the one thing that means so much. They are free. The hours slip by quickly for the victims of total war. Soon their gaiety will have a deeper meaning as they return home to rebuild a shattered Europe. Another name is added to the Dominion's Roll of Honor. It is Major Frederick Albert Tilston of the Essex Scottish Regiment, Canada's 11th BC. In second Canadian Div's attack through the Hochwald Forest, the Essex Scottish were given the task of clearing the northern sector. Major Tilston led his company across 500 yards of open country under the heels of our own barrage. He cleared out a machine gun nest single-handed and was first to reach the objective. Although three times wounded, he carried ammo to the company on his flank and directed the complete plan of defense. Thus, he writes another glorious page in Canadian Army history. Royal Canadian engineers put the finishing touches to two giant Bailey bridges across the Isel River at Zutphen. Built for military traffic through occupied Germany, the bridges take the place of those destroyed by the fleeing enemy before VE Day. One-way traffic only is handled by each bridge. An official opening ceremony takes place as the bridges are completed and ready for traffic. In honor of their chief, the engineers name one bridge Harry and the other Queerar, after the GOC and C, 1st Canadian Army. General Harry Quirar arrives to inspect the Guard of Honor and to formally open the twin bridges. He is the first to drive over the completed spans. Addressing the troops, the general says, the Canadian Army has done more fighting on water, flooded areas, and across rivers than any other army. I am greatly honored, therefore, that you have given my name to these bridges. <laughs> At the Aldershot repatriation area, the last batch of troops for Canada leave attend the roll call that's never missed. With the leave men go some of those who have volunteered for Far East duty and returning prisoners of war. Special trains are ready to take them on the last lap of their land journey through England. All fond farewells to hospitable Britishers have been said, and now it's Canada or bust. The port of embarkation is Southampton, and the ship chosen to take them home is the Pasteur, so often reported sunk by the German high command, but still in their pitching. Counting the days until they see their beloved homeland, the lads scramble aboard with gusto. RCAF XPOWs are glad to be on the last lap of their homeward journey. After years in Jerry prison camps, the homeward trip is the greatest event of their lives. Southampton civic dignitaries bid Godspeed to their departing friends. Many heartwarming memories go with the returning lads and many sad ones. Soon a new life will start under the fair skies of Canada.